The coastal city of Mangaluru in Karnataka has a rich heritage with traditions like Thambala, Bhutakola, Nagaradhane, Yakshagana and the Tiger Dance. Legend has it that this region is a part of Parashurama Shristi. In the olden days, there were schools perpetuating Vedic culture and Shankaracharya and Madhvacharya strode across this land. This region, which is home to ancient pilgrimage centers like Kollur and Shringeri, South Canada also nourished the Buddhism and Jainism. Traditional artisans skilled in various arts and crafts have thrived here. Being a port city, Mangaluru had centuries of trade relations with the Arab world through the export of rice, pepper, coffee, cardamom and clove. During British rule, it came under the South Canada district of the Madras Presidency. Due to its vast trade connections and also because it passed under various rulers such as the Vijayanagara Empire, the Keladi Kings, Rani Abakka, the Portuguese, Hyder Ali, Tipu Sultan and the British, the region fostered a multicultural environment. By the 19th century, the region emerged as the cradle of education and banking having given birth to 22 banks. In 1924, an important development took place. The Swadeshi movement gained momentum under Mahatma Gandhi. There was boycott of foreign goods and an emphasis on self-reliance. The passion for freedom was taking root. Parallel to this was the Karnataka Ekikarana movement. This was a robust mass movement for the unification of Kannada-speaking areas in the Karnatic region and the creation of a Kannadiga identity. Dr. Udupi Ramarao, a member of the Madras Legislative Assembly from Udupi, took great interest in this movement. He was also deeply motivated for the socio-economic upliftment of this region. Inspired by his ideas, a few like-minded people including Sri B. R. Vyasaraya Achar who were present during one of his social interactions made the historic decision to establish a bank in this region to assist the common people. It would give financial assistance for agriculture, education, trade and rural development and help every citizen irrespective of caste, creed or religion. Thus was born Karnataka Bank Limited, which was incorporated on February 18, 1924 with Sri B. R. Vyasaraya Achar as the founding chairman. Along with him, there were eight more founding directors. It had a paid-up capital of Rs. 11,580 and an authorized capital of Rs. 5 lakh. The founders branch in Dongarakeri, Mangaluru opened on May 23rd. In the very first year, it made a handsome profit and declared a dividend of 8.25%, a tradition which the bank has continued year after year. The bank recorded sustained growth over the years. Its second branch opened in Madras in 1930 and the third in Udupi in 1934. In 1947, the first branch in Bangalore was opened on Kempegowda Road. By 1949, its Silver Jubilee year the bank had nine branches and a total deposits of rupees 55 lakh. The total business crossed 1 crore in 1953. True to its vision, Karnataka Bank aspired to serve all people. It was well ahead of its time and prioritized agricultural financing right from inception, much before the government identified it as a priority sector. In 1958, the Duayan of the bank, Sri K. Suryanarayana Adiga, was appointed chairman. Under his leadership, the bank saw rapid expansion through mergers and acquisitions. Sringeri Sharda Bank Limited, with four branches, merged with Karnataka Bank in 1960. In 1964, the Chital Durg Bank Limited, the first registered bank in Karnataka, was taken over. And in 1966, the Hubali-based Bank of Karnataka with 14 branches was acquired. In 1971, the bank opened its first branch in Mumbai at Fort Bombay. In 1972, the bank opened its head office building at Kodial Bail, Mangaluru and inaugurated by Sri T.A. Pai, Honorable Minister for Railways. 
The Golden Jubilee was celebrated in 1974 with a turnover of rupees 50 crore, 146 branches and 1,314 employees. In 1977, the bank embarked on corporatization and modern brand building. It approached Dr. Kota Shivarama Karanta, the Dwayan of Kannada Literature and a Jnanapeet awardee. He designed a logo that signifies the essence of the bank's founding philosophy of growth and prosperity. It comprises two intersecting triangles in the form of a star with a dot in the center. The upward triangle identifies with the masculine force or Shiva, while the downward triangle signifies the feminine force or Shakti. The dot stands for the union of both spirits, or in short, the family bond. The original logo design was blessed by His Holiness Sri Sri Abhinava Vidya Tirtha Mahaswami, the 35th Jagadguru of the Sringeri Sri Sharda Peetam and handed over to Sri KSN Adiga. Subsequently, in 1978, the bank entered the national capital with the Vice President of India, Sri B.D. Jatti, inaugurating its first branch in New Delhi at Kadot Place, growth under successive chairmen and CEOs. After Sri KSN Adiga retired, new leaders emerged to carry forward his vision and take the bank in dynamic new directions. Sri K. N. Basri became the third chairman in 1979. He was instrumental in greatly improving the internal systems and processes in the bank. In 1980, Sri P. Raghuram became the chairman. Having come from abroad, he infused a modern orientation. The bank celebrated its Diamond Jubilee and Abhyudaya House magazine was introduced. 250th branch was opened at Koromangala and the deposits crossed rupees 200 crore. In 1985, Sri P. Sundar Rao became chairman and the bank's business crossed rupees 500 crore. The Bombay Borivili branch was declared as the first model branch and the merchant banking division was started. After Sri H. M. Rama Rao became the sixth chairman, turnover crossed rupees 1000 crore and the bank was listed for the first time on the Mangaluru Stock Exchange. In 1994, Sri U. V. Butt became the seventh chairman and the total deposits crossed rupees 1000 crore. The first overseas branch and the first industrial finance branch were opened. Sri M. S. Krishna Butt became the eighth chairman in 1995 and initiated the modern phase. The bank had its first public issue of equity shares. Despite the discouraging market conditions, the IPO got an overwhelming response and was oversubscribed, thanks to the efforts of the staff and the confidence of the customers and investors. The turnover crossed rupees 5,000 crore. During the Platinum Jubilee year in 1999, the bank inaugurated the KSN Adiga Smarak Bhavana in Mangaluru, which houses a branch, a regional office and staff quarters. The Founders' Day lecture was instituted for 18th February every year. Sri Anantakrishna, who became the ninth chairman in 2000, gave impetus to technology. On October 2nd, 2000, the bank took the visionary step of unveiling Finacol, the new technology platform of Infosys Technologies. With this, Karnataka Bank became the pioneer among the first generation private sector banks to bring all operations under core banking and the process was completed in 2007. With expanding operations, the bank shifted its head office to a new building at Mahavira Circle, Mangaluru with a built-up area of 1,25,000 square feet. It floated the Universal Sompo General Insurance Company Limited as a joint venture in 2009. In compliance with regulatory requirements, the bank restructured the Apex leadership and created the post of Managing Director and CEO. Sri P. Jairam Bhatt became the first appointee to this position with Sri Anantakrishna continuing as a part-time non-executive chairman. His tenure saw a quantum leap in growth. The bank introduced the KBL Mobile Banking Solution. He launched Project Tejas for business process re-engineering 
and released the KBL Vision 2020 document with a vision to be a progressive, prosperous and well-governed bank. The bank's turnover crossed rupees 75,000 crore. Paradigm shift under Sri Mahabaleshwara MS. Sri Mahabaleshwara MS became the managing director and CEO in 2017, with Sri P. Jayarama Bhatt continuing as a part time non executive chairman until he was succeeded by Sri P. Pradeep Kumar in 2022. Under Sri Mahabaleshwara, the bank launched its transformation project. KBL Vikas with Boston Consulting Group as its knowledge partner. With this, the bank is poised to make a paradigm shift to 21st century banking. The bank's digital transactions reached a new high of 93.22%. The bank's two digital banking unit located at Airport Road, Mangaluru and Vijayanagar First Stage, Mysore were inaugurated via virtual mode by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. The bank won many awards. The bank's customer base crossed 1 crore in the financial year 2017 to 18 and the total business turnover surpassed rupees 1,25,000 crore during 2019 to 20. The bank registered an all-time high net profit of rupees 508.62 crore for the year ending March 31st, 2022. Continuing its remarkable performance, the bank clocked a net profit of 826.49 crore for the end of nine months of the present financial year 2022 to 2023. Karnataka Bank is uh, pride of Karnataka and jewel of India. The uniqueness of Karnataka Bank uh, is that even though there are no promoters, we are a professionally managed bank which is uh, customer centric and we are also time tested and a profitably run bank. Ever since its inception in 1924, we are consistently earning profit and we have an unbroken profit record for the last 99 years and also a very impressive dividend payment history. Professional board, seasoned executives, committed employees and the loyal customers. These are the four strong pillars of Karnataka Bank. We are also one of the first few banks to introduce core banking solutions way back in the year 1999-2000 itself. Powered by KBL because Karnataka Bank is now all poised to become strong, vibrant digital bank. Now, as it enters its centennial year, Karnataka Bank is proud of its legacy as a technology-driven, customer-centric bank focused on its founding values of fostering the economic development of the common people and an appreciable track record of CSR initiatives. With close to 900 branches and over 8,500 employees and 13 million customers spanning 22 states and two union territories, the bank is poised to surpass rupees 1,50,000 crore in business turnover, is fully geared to face the emerging challenges of the future and looks forward to traversing yet another century with a progressive vision and result-oriented approach. The future is indeed bright and shining for Karnataka Bank.